Hey everyone, I need your attention for one minute. This is not one of those ads. This is something that has changed my entire life. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that this is all about personal development as the foundation for everything good in your life. And this podcast is now sponsored by Growth Day, which is the world's first all-in-one personal development app. I mean, oh my gosh, can you imagine having everything all in one place that you need to create? create the life that you want, now you can. So if you've been struggling with your motivation, your mood, your productivity, or your purpose, you have to check this out. Growth Day helps you consciously change your life and achieve your potential. It has all the self-improvement tools, motivational classes, and life coaching all in one place. So many of us want to improve our lives, but the question is how? Where do we start? What do we use? How do you get unstuck? How do you make self-improvement stick? Well, research shows how. It's when you consistently journal, track your habits, set goals, learn from empowering mentors, and challenge yourself that you'll be happier, healthier, and more successful. But let me ask you something. Where do you actually do all of your personal development work? I have to tell you that over 300,000 people use Growth Day for a reason. It works. It's the world's number one software for self-improvement. Growth Day has an amazing mindset journal that I absolutely love, a habit tracker, and a goal setting system. In fact, I bet if you went to my stories this week, you probably saw me using the journaling app and telling you to do it too, because it's the first time that journaling has ever actually stuck consistently in my life because of this app. And best of all, Growth Day has live inspirational classes every single week from the world's top motivational speakers and life coaches. These are people who have impacted my life in huge ways. These are mentors who I already knew and loved. In fact, this is something that's so huge for me, you guys. I personally teach a class in Growth Day every single month, and it is one of the most fun things that I get to do, and I'd love to see you there. These classes will truly shift your life. There's always something new that you will learn. So join me in 300,000 achievers growing our lives with actual real intention. Visit growthday.com slash Lori for a free trial. Yes, you can try this for free. So go to growthday.com slash Lori and go live your best life. You guys, that's growthday.com forward slash Lori. And I can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. I'm Lori Harder, founder of The Bliss Project, three-time fitness world champion, fitness expert, and cover model turned self-love junkie, lifestyle entrepreneur, and author. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a thought that will help you bust through your fears, connect to your soul, and get focused and clear so you can elevate your life, business, and relationships. We don't wait until we're ready for someone to tell us we're good enough. We take what we want and we anoint ourselves. Get ready to earn, own, and unapologetically rock your happiness every single day. Are you with me? Here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. I am so, I need an extra so in here, so, so excited for my guest today. Um, She is not only one of my favorite people in the world, but she is a friend that literally inspires me daily uh, just through everything that she's doing, whether it's just something I see on Facebook or Instagram, but what she's doing globally, she is truly creating a massive shift that is and will be felt through the entire world. So I am beyond thrilled to have Peta Kelly on the show today. She's an unbridled soul on a mission to unleash the genius of Gen Ys globally. She dropped being a PhD and became a millionaire network marketer with a team of 40,000 people 
by the age of 25. And now she's building a global enterprise to mobilize the next generation of conscious leaders in the new way. So you can see PETA speak on global stages. She speaks barefoot to tens of thousands of people and to millions through her various platforms, sharing her visionary messages of conscious living. And she is also the epic creator of the new way and genius, which is going to be the most beautiful event that she shall chat about. So you guys, I can't wait for you to hear this interview. Here we go. Pita, I am so incredibly excited to have you on. You have no idea just because uh, watching you on stage is um, something that literally I think my hair catches on fire and seeing you dance around without your shoes on. But really what it is for me is hearing you speak and you remind me of why I am in existence as a human being. So I'm beyond thrilled to have you on because not only do I get to see you in that light, but I get to see you as a friend and a person and know everything that it takes to get there. So thank you so much for being on today. So much for having me. I'm so excited when I saw that you were doing a podcast. I was just so pumped because it's, you know, the world needs, the world needs more Laurie who is uninhibited Laurie. Mm. Well, I think I had your name on a list before I knew why I had your name on a list. Um, <laughs> oh, I need her on a podcast. Okay. Awesome. It's because so, of my accent. Oh my God. It is. It's like the sexiest accent in the entire world. You could, you could literally yeah. just say nothing and I'd be like, you are so smart. I love you. Um, oh, so, <laughs> so Pita, I think that so many people see you in this light where they're like, oh my God, she's so courageous and she's got this message and and you know I how do I know what my message is and what is that and how can I show up like that or maybe I could never show up like that but I really would love if you could tell us about a time before you knew what your message was or you know just when you were a a time long before you knew that any of this was a possibility for you ah I mean I can remember it all and it's like it's just so part of it like even right now it's so funny you say that like people expect there to be like so much clarity all the time for you like once you once you have a little bit of clarity that you have clarity forever Mm. that's just not the case like right now I'm at this point in my life where I have had so much clarity around so much stuff but now I'm venturing into new stuff there's that crazy overwhelm and that crazy confusion again Mm. that I think we all experience so like it's not even just that I used to have moments of you know not feeling courageous or not feeling clear it's that I still have them it's like every time you um every time I decide you know every time I expand in the direction of um you know more abundance or um more creativity or more success or more love there comes a point where you have to break through this feeling of um fear and you know where is my courage and is it in my pocket like can I pull it out and this Mm. this overwhelm and this confusion so it's like, just as you said that, I thought, yeah, I can think of so many times before I started speaking, but I'm also experiencing one of those times like today. Mm. So I just wanted that. I just wanted to make that clear that it just doesn't go away. You know, it's every time you break through that, you're going to have these same feelings of, um, oh my God, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. It's just a part mm-hmm. of the process. But I mean, I remember before, um, before I started really on the journey of personal development and I was doing a PhD and I, you know, six years in university and I was going through the motions and that felt, um, it felt courageous for me to be there at the time because it's not an easy thing to do to wake up in the morning, get to the lab 6am, draw blood from people who are running on a treadmill and then, um, you know, study your ass off. And so that felt really courageous to me. But looking back, uh, I was incredibly like foggy about what I was doing with my life because I was so in the swing of, yeah, this is good, Peter. You should just do it because it's, this is success. This is success by everybody else's measure of success. So I remember I felt quite cloudy back then. I remember I felt quite cloudy when I began my first business and everybody thought I was crazy and I couldn't get the words out about how, why I wanted to do it, but you know, it was in my heart and you know, it's like, I, I go through that a lot. Um, I go through the, those feelings of, and I'm sure you're the same, where you have, you have this thing roaring inside you, whether it's an idea, whether it's a passion, whether it's this thing you can't even put your finger on, whether it's a knowing, like, I know that I have something great to do. I know I have something great to give, but you can't articulate it. You can't even draw it in a diagram. It's just like this, 
and it feels frustrating and it, you know mm. it's just you just feel lost mm. and that's like like I said when I have moments of clarity I grab onto them and I cherish them and I kiss them knowing that they're <laughs> going to leave me again and then I'm going to have the fogginess once more because that's what happens in the pursuit of growth mm. so yeah I've had them in the past and I'm like I said today like you said you know I have I've had times where I've been super courageous and super clear with my message, but right now I'm getting ready to expand into something really big and scary. And so I have right next to me, Laurie, like six pages of diagrams trying to, trying to articulate what I'm trying to articulate. And it is driving me mad because my heart has not yet found its way into words. And that feels foggy. You know, it feels Mm -hmm. foggy. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, that is huge what you just said. And I love that we're capturing just the emotion that you're feeling because it's so real and so raw. And I feel, I mean, I feel that I know those moments you spoke directly to my soul and the fact that I have so been there. Um, I'm actually in a clear space right now, but before this, I mean, even last month, I get that where I'm like, this isn't what I want. This isn't how I want it to look. So yes, it happens all the time. And I think it's vital for people to know that it just doesn't show up like this is the message. This is how it's going to no. get out. This is how it's going to look. So what is something when you feel that way? I know that, you know, it, it sounds like you're doing a lot of writing exercises around it. What is something that you follow? Are there feelings that you look for to know that you're getting pulled in a certain direction or maybe mm-hmm. rituals or routines that you would do around it to just when that does hit to explore it more? Yeah. And that is just so big. That's what I I talk about with my, I have a supercharged program and we talk about this almost daily. It's about the soul, how to distinguish whether it's your soul telling you to do something or whether it's your ego telling you to do something or Mm. whether it's an idea that's worth pursuing or whether it's an idea that's, that's crap, but it's leading (laughs) you to a better idea. It's, we talk about that all the time because it's everything. But the first thing I tell myself when I have these, these overwhelm, overwhelming feelings of idea of ideas and interests and nudges which to me happen all day every day <laughs> like I am incredibly ADD like <laughs> incredibly ADD to the point where like I mean there it, it is outrageous like I have an idea and then two minutes later I am writing well I don't want to write a book anymore and then I'm over to this thing and I think what I've learned firstly is to not resent that sort of chaos, that creative chaos. Because I used to just beat myself up about it. Well, you have so many ideas and you you just, you you have so many that you don't follow through. And I just used to beat myself up for having all these great ideas. And in the meantime, my soul is like, Peter, you are so wonderful for having all these great ideas and for letting them all in and for being so open to explore them. And when I realized the divinity of these ideas, I started to respect them in a way where, I did set some processes around them because otherwise it is just chaos and great ideas aren't anything unless they, you know, become something. Mm -hmm. So I started to, um, to, like you said, just notice for the signs. I noticed, I start to notice the length at which an idea stays with me firstly, because I do believe that we have a lot of ideas, which are clues that lead us to uh, the bigger things that, you know, we really need to do. And I have a lot of them. Like, for instance, in my notes on my phone, I I think I maxed out my phone, not with photos Mm -hmm. or screenshots of Instagram, but with notes Mm -hmm. because it's like, okay, this, this, and then this, and then this, and then this. So the first thing I do is not – is to just appreciate the chaos at which they're coming in because that's my style – and I honor them all and I l- listen to which ones stay around the longest. So, for instance, um, I've had this one project which I'm working on now. I'm very behind the scenes because I am still trying to articulate it. That has been on me for three years and it's never let me go. So that's one that I am honoring for that persistence because I know it's mine to bring into the, this world. And I think that uh, something Elizabeth Gilbert taught me was that, you know, when an idea comes to you, if you don't act on it, it will visit someone else mm-hmm. um, because it's, it is an idea is a spirit. It's an entity trying to be born into this world through one of us. And I think that, so when my ideas come, it's like, I respect them like that. I try and, um, you know, make sure that I am not resenting them or dodging them or trying to act on all of them. I try and respect them each as different entities, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. 
I always try and meditate on them. And I think that I use the word try to meditate on them because I'm not going to pretend as if um, meditating on these ideas is, is always this really blissful experience because sometimes you sit down and you feel like, I mean, it is like this washing machine and it is just chaotic. But I, I meditate on them in terms of um, just chatting with my soul about it and just, you know, being persistent with that process. Because some days I'll sit down and I'll chat to my soul and it will actually be my ego speaking mm. because I'm not in my, I'm not, I'm in a chaos energy, you know? So then I'll do it again the next day. And so I'm really committed to having a relationship with my feelings and my impulses and my ideas so that I can become better at managing them and acting upon them and not being so, um, I suppose, impulsive and, you know, crazy with it all and chaotic with it all. So I think it, it comes down to um, firstly having a good relationship with them and realizing that um, they are, you know, their spirits and their entities and that um, your feelings are always guiding you to, um, you know, to where mm -hmm. you should act. And I know you're a big believer in fear and I am too. I love fear. I love it. And I, I firmly believe that fear is just excitement without the breath. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> We're excited about it, but we're not breathing because it is that exciting that we've now told ourselves that it's really scary. So I love fear. I listen to fear. I follow fear. Um, I don't follow feelings of, Ugh, you know, those, Ugh, yeah. th there's a difference. I don't follow those. I follow fear. I follow excitement. I follow that feeling that I have when I am emotional about something. Like today I was writing up my vision for my new company and I had to stop because I felt like I was, I felt like I was working on behalf of that company and, and that I was bringing this entity to life and that feeling of like divinity, I follow that like as mm -hmm. if it is everything. So it's, it's really, and I know that probably sounds like the most ADD answer ever, but it really, it really is all of those moving parts. And it's just, and the, the number one thing is just know that it's always going to become clear eventually. If you have these processes, you might speed it up, but it, you know, you're never like, it's always going to appear for you. It's mm -hmm. always going to become clear for you. It's always okay. Mm -hmm. So just not to resent the chaos when it's there. That's, I'm, in, I'm in it right now. So mm -hmm. it's so fresh. Just don't, don't resent it. Just, just love it and do, you know, just go through whichever processes you want to go through and just trust that, you know, you're not crazy because you have a lot going on around, it, you know, in one time you're eager and you're curious and that needs to be honored. Mm. Oh my gosh. Um, so my heart is pounding super fast <laughs> because you are literally speaking to, um, number one, me directly. And also I know probably 90% of the people who are listening because, um, uh, I think we get caught in that space of thinking it's going to be clear and, oh, we're just going to know, and it's going to feel so yeah. good. And we're not going to have all of those questions and, you know, all of the, I can just feel it. I can feel the excitement, but I can also feel the, yeah. you know, searching within it. And it's so mm -hmm. beautiful because you're honoring it. And I think that's what yeah. I, I hope that people got from what you just said. I, I'm sure that they did that. You are honoring each one of those feelings and saying, mm -hmm. I, it, because we're going to experience all of those facets of emotions, right? Yeah. Like we're going to be feeling different feelings in every moment, but which ones are you going to look for or let come through or let guide you? And that's yeah. exactly how, that's exactly what I do. So I feel like you are speaking directly to me. Um, and, mm -hmm. and honestly, having you be in it right now, we can all, fe all feel it. So I know that everybody yeah. who's listening is in it. And I think that was just so incredibly actually clarifying to yeah. also know this is exactly how it feels when you're in it. Congratulations. <laughs> like, it's congrats. Crazy. <laughs> and I think the, I think an important thing, an other thing that I'm doing now, like just now, like, so like a couple of weeks ago, everything was so clear. And then my ideas started again. And when I get pulled, like divinely pulled to an idea, like I, I cannot stop. I wake up in the middle of the night. Like I am so committed to being the vessel for whatever it is trying to be birthed through me mm -hmm. that sometimes it does get really intense because you're so open and aware of all of the signals, all of the impulses, all of the ideas. It's like one, it's like Pringles. Like once you start, <laughs> you are, you are done. You cannot stop ever. So like what I'm doing lately now is in my, in my morning meditation, I'm just changing it up a little bit. It's just a lot more 
um, surrender and a lot less um, nothing in terms, like I'm not trying to sit there in silence because I'm honoring the fact that it is a crazy time. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll get into my meditation room and I will actually bow with my knees on the ground and my head, my head touching the floor so that my heart is higher than my head. Mm -hmm. And I sit there with my hands in prayer position and I let my heart just be higher than my head. And I just say out loud, you know, to my soul, I, this is what I do with my soul. And then I do a separate one with the divine God, the universe, but my, the soul is the mediary between the two. And I just say, you know, soul, what, whatever, whatever is keeping me from my clarity, whatever programs, thoughts, habits, patterns, energies that are not mine, that are keeping me from my highest purpose right now, you know, please, please remove them. And I use words which are real to me, like, please just get rid of them. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And then I will, I'll turn around and I'll sit there in, um, in a grounding position with my hands um, touching my knees rather than turned around facing up because I am grounding I'm just grounding. And then I will actually get a, um, well, before that, what I do, and this is something that I think we've all heard, but it hit me again, Marianne Williamson's prayer. Mm -hmm. um, what, and this is what I say to uh, the divine God, the universe, the, the, the force. I say, um, where would you have me go? Mm -hmm. What would you have me do? What would you have me say? Mm -hmm. And to who? And that just, again, brings it back down to, uh, puts me in the energy of Peter. You don't have to figure this all out. This is not about you figuring this all out. Your brain will never be able to figure this out. It's just a brain. It's nothing compared to God, the universe, the force, or one. It's nothing. So you have to surrender because this is not figure outable in your head. And I think when I say those words out loud with Marianne Williamson, I think it's from the Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. It feels so. Good. It's like, okay, my number one intention today is to just to keep, stay open, just to stay flawed, just to stay flowy, just to stay aware and ready um, to be guided rather than figure like, rather than feel like we have to get all of these thoughts and feelings and impulses and inspirations and figure them out in our head because they're just not figure outable, but they are receivable when we are able to surrender. And I think that you just got to be gentle to yourself through the process because I think everybody listening to your podcast, Laurie, and just like you, you you're committed committed to greatness. And that journey isn't an easy one. The, the greatness of ourselves and bettering ourselves and expanding into love, success, and abundance is not easy. So we've got to be gentle to ourselves through these times of expansion and these times of growth. Uh, just And then when we do have the times of clarity, like I just, if I'm in those days of clarity, like you're in now, I mean, I just go and celebrate. I go and have like <laughs> two almond milk lattes in one day. I mean, just like <laughs> fully go wild because I'm like, it's here and it's going to go away and I'm going to mm. have to be in the trenches again and then it's going to come again. <laughs> Uh, yes, <laughs> I so feel that. And I am, I might have three almond milk lattes. Um, <laughs> so I love that you said be gentle with yourself. And I also want to say that, you know, a lot of the people who are stepping in and taking action, it's because they are saying the things that you're saying to yourself. Like we're all saying, um, you know, this, this isn't about me or I love, love, love that quote too. I know we share like so many of the favorite quotes now that I'm hearing you speak. I use the same stuff. I love it. I'm like eating this up, um, is, um, you feel weak when you think, or when you're relying on your own strength. And that's such a reminder. That's everything that you just said. It's like saying this mm -hmm. really isn't your message. Like it's that gift of inspiration, getting out of your way. Otherwise that is so much responsibility and uh -huh. you get into the comparison game. And that's what I want people to know is, you know, when you think that you have to be unique and different and perfect and this great speaker and, and look this way and do that and have you hold yourself to all these mm -hmm. things, you totally skew the message and yeah. that message is dying to come through. But that's why I love what you said, what you do, you put your heart above your head and you just say, what is stopping me from that? That is something you guys that you should take with you. Start Start trying it even if it feels crazy right away it's yeah. gonna feel real good later um so yeah. thank you for that that was beautiful i'm gonna do that so you can guarantee i'll text you from that position it is, feels um, so good <laughs> i'm like this is awesome i'm clearing everything away so there's something on your website it says um shut the noise up and start living the life that you're capable of and i think that first sentence shut the noise up mm -hmm. i think so many people could get clarity right around that could you tell me a little bit about what you do to shut the noise up or the message that you give people 
Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing is just identifying the noise because we are so in our heads as humans and there is a noise that is everywhere and the noise can be your own thoughts, bless them, but you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're really not, they're not yours. Like our thoughts are not ours. They're the result of the collective consciousness. Like they're, they're not ours. So I think when we learn what the noise really is and we can just watch it, and realize that noise is coming from everywhere, but we feel like it's our noise and then we believe it to be true. So there's the noise of the world. There's the noise of our family and friends. Sometimes, they, you, know, you know, there's family and friends who have, um, you know, those opinions which become our own. Rah, 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 <laughs> this basic, but the noise essentially, you can call it, um, I mean, so the noise can also be... Um, you know, the ego, but the thing is, the ego is so uh, tricky. And I love talking about the ego because it's, it's not what everybody thinks. Like it's not bravado. It's not arrogance. The ego is like our little guy, like a little person, like, I mean, itty bitty shitty committee. I heard someone <laughs> say. It's just, but it's, it's just doing its job, trying to keep us safe. And that's all it's doing. And I think as soon as we can learn to stop resenting this noise that we have, whether it's um, other people's energies becoming ours, whether it's the collective consciousness, whether it's um, these crazy patterns of thought that we've built, started to believe to be true, whether it's the itty bitty shitty committee, which is like our ego who knows that it can keep us safe using these exact thoughts. It's anything which um, is not our highest self that is speaking to us. It's any voice which is not our highest self speaking to us. That's what noise is. Mm. And the, the key is differentiating between the noise, which is not ours. And yes, sometimes it's like, ah, go away. You know, you just wish that you had like this, uh, like a mosquito spray for it. <laughs> but then there's the voice, which is so soft and so subtle and so quiet and never forces its way into your awareness like the noise does until it really has to, until it has to make you sick or until it has to make you miss the flight. So there's the noise which is so loud and it is debilitating for almost everyone, almost everybody in the world. And it's, you know, it's the noise which is, um, you know, good enough. You know, you're, why would you ever be able to do that? You don't have enough time. But then it's also the more subtle noise of the ego, which, um, which sounds almost like positive, you know, when, when it starts to get tricky, which is, um, yeah, yeah, why don't you go and do that opportunity? Like, that's really good when, when it's really not your higher self speaking. So when I say shut the noise up, it really is where can you become more aware in your life and how can you become more aware where you can realize that there are a lot of influences in your energetic space, which are yours and not yours, which you are believing to be true because they are because you are used to them, because they are familiar, because they are loud, because they are persistent, and because they make sense. Mm. And that's the key is noise makes sense. Other people's opinions sometimes make sense because that we're just so used to them. So this is a huge leap. And it's something that I did a keynote on it last year because it is so important. It's this relationship, and it all comes back to this relationship with your soul. It all comes back to that trust what where is where is this noise and where is it really my soul speaking and it's an ongoing it's an ongoing thing like just the other day so I'm meant to fly to Hawaii next Wednesday I booked myself a trip um to Hawaii next week just to have five days away um on my own to write because I'm sure as you know as an entrepreneur working from home Mm. there are distractions like Mm -hmm. dogs that want to play outside and things like that and (laughs) sometimes you need to take yourself away so I booked this trip um, to go to Hawaii on Wednesday. And in the lead up to it, I just started to feel like Mm. I shouldn't go. And I just started to feel like, you know, I just don't want to be on another plane because a week later I I go away for a month. Mm. So yeah, I just really, maybe I just don't need to go. But then my noise was like, well, of course you got to go. You already booked it. You can't waste the money. And that made sense to me. You know, Mm -hmm. it made sense. But my soul was telling me so loud and clear through these feelings and these feelings which have never, ever, ever been wrong in the existence of anyone's life ever. The intuition has never, ever, ever once been wrong. It's the only thing in the world to have a 100% clear track record. And this, this intuition is telling me, Peter, it's, it's too much, you know, book. Don't. And the intuition for me was not audible. All it was was 
was this not being able to let go of, mm. you know, not being able to be okay with going on the trip. Mm. It was the fact that I couldn't be okay with going on the trip. That's, mm. that's as subtle as my voice was. It didn't get a texter like a crazy spirit and write on the wall, Peter, don't <laughs> go to Hawaii. It was just this subtle, this subtle feeling of, well, it still doesn't feel right. Uh, it still doesn't feel right. It still doesn't feel right. That was all my soul needed to say. Two years ago, I would have ignored that. Mm. I just would have ignored that. And I th- would have thought that that was the crazy voice. But now after doing all this work and just being persistent with this relationship between my soul and ego and making sure I'm trying and it's trying, it's never when this spiritual journey, you can, you can use the word try when it comes to spiritual journey because it's, it's not easy. So mm. I, so I thought, oh, you know what, I am. I literally went back and forth with my assistant four times. I'm going to go to Hawaii. I'm not going to go to Hawaii. I'm going to go to Hawaii. No, I'm not going to go to Hawaii. And then l- listening to the voice, my, the noise that was coming to me, like, Peter, go. You deserve a break. You know, you're going to lose your money. Don't, you can't be ir- this irresponsible with money now. You just started in a new company. And this this noise was going on and on and on and on and on. And in the meantime, my like my my higher self was sitting back like, okay, Peter, we get that this noise is making so much sense to you, but we're just going to sit here and keep this same feeling in your gut mm-hmm. until you listen to me. And then I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I was like, you know what? I just don't feel good about mm-hmm. going. And I messaged my assistant and I said, you know, Held, I, I'm not going. And then as soon as that happened, the feeling in my gut went away and I felt so good. And that was just last week. And that's just another example of how the noise in everyday situations, you know, is there's always a noise and a, there's always a noise, which is just the result of other people's thinking and your previous programs and patterns. It's not always your higher self. Mm. And this is why I'm so big on teaching this because your higher self is always speaking to you, but it's quiet and it's subtle and it's not forceful unless it really needs to be. So Laurie, I don't know that if I had have ignored my noise, if I had have ignored my higher self, I maybe got to the airport and the flight was delayed or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I'm just so grateful that I'm learning to honor um, honor this, this beautiful guidance that we always have because when we do that, that's when we start to hear more truth and that's when we start to feel more love and that's when we start to be more gentle with ourselves because that voice when we start to have a relationship with that voice and I just finished I'm just reading Meet Your Soul by Elisa Romeo which is all about this but when you when you start to have a relationship like that all this craziness doesn't feel so crazy like even now the craziness that I'm in I still when I get quiet I still hear this voice Peter you're so close Peter keep going you are just so courageous for being this curious. And I just honor you for still working this hard, even though you could be on a beach anywhere in the world. And my voice is reminding me of all these beautiful things. Like it's coming, Peter, it's coming, you know, like enjoy this chaos because you know what's around the corner. So this voice is always there. And like the noise is, why don't you have your ideas yet? Why don't you get a pen? Your website isn't looking like you want it to look. I mean, like, how are you going to get this out? How is there ever going to be anyone who's going to be able to, you know, do you need an app developer? Do you need this? Do you need this? And it's like, cool. That's still part of the program. And if we didn't have that noise, we would not be on planet earth. The Mm. ego, the noise is keeping us here. If we didn't have it, we would be on the spirit world already. We need it. We need it to be mm-hmm. here. I think the lost planet of Atlantis. We don't want that to happen again. We need we need both. Mm-hmm. But we just need to be able to look at them both and not attach to one more than the other and just to understand that, you know, and that might sound like <laughs> like it's so crazy, but it all it is is all it is is just to start to notice. And that's what I teach everybody in my supercharge group. This is the number one topic we talk about. Resistance, ego, self-sabotage. Mm. That is all another word for noise. Mm-hmm. And my number one piece of advice I give to every single one of them is the first step is just noticing it. Mm. Notice where it's coming from. Notice whether or not it makes sense to you and notice whether or not there is some other guidance that you're ignoring. It's just noticing. There isn't... Mm a one, two kick punch that you can download and put into your brain, which gets rid of this noise. There isn't one available yet. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe there's one coming. 
for now, it's just about noticing and just dancing. And like I said, coming back to just being gentle with yourself Mm. throughout it, because life as a human is super simple. And I think your husband, Chris, actually posted this. Life is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Mm. And I think we have to um, come back to that you know. Mm-hmm. Wow. Beautiful. Um, I love that you gave them just a cue to start looking. Cause I think some people can feel so, I mean, right. Everybody just feels so overwhelmed with what is intuition and what, what is not, and how do I know? And, and like you said, just noticing and observing, and it's going to feel crazy at first. And even when you're in it, it can feel crazy. And, you know, I think as you're talking, it's just so beautiful because you're loving on the chaos because, um, I had just put posted that happy, uh, the pursuit, um, is happiness or happiness is the pursuit. Um, so going through all these feelings is like, it's crazy, but it's beautiful, right? Like you, mm-hmm. you can't imagine not having them if I took them away. Right. Like, where do you go on yeah. the other side? It's um, boring. Boring. Oh, no, this is what keeps you busy and what <sighs> keeps you, and what keeps you right. Like you're not busy enough, but this is, yeah, this is what keeps that passion lit. And so I want to ask you a question with, I think especially after coming off of um, my bliss project weekend, I think that there's a, there was a lot of um, excitement, but also a lot of hesitation around um, number one, what is my purpose and how do I find it? But we kind of talked about that, but also what happens when you step out and there can be a lot of different things that come with it. Number one, responsibilities. Number two, people sharing their opinions. Number three, um, just, I don't really have another number three, but number one and two were enough. So as far as that goes, why is it, why is it worth it in your opinion? Why is it worth it to put yourself out there and get that passion out? And what's going to happen if you don't? I mean, that is life. Like that is life. Like it is uh, the, the, like the passion is such a, um, passion is such a big word, but curiosity Mm. is life. Like that, that's what it means to be a human Mm. is to feel it all and experience it all. Like perfectionism was never part of the plan for humans. I am a hundred percent sure of that. And yet when we strive for that perfect journey and I hope nobody says anything about what I do and, you know, I hope I know how to build a company from scratch. Like that perfectionism was never meant to be part of the human journey. So I don't know when we were fed that bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's just not part of it. So I Mm -hmm. think when, when we are like, there is no other option for experiencing life as a human in all of its beauty and all of its glory. It, is all about listening to that thing that excites you. It is all about risking um, maybe a lot of things for that, for that, I suppose, calling, which I don't want to make it sound like such a big thing because like I heard Liz Gilbert say that, again, I'm referencing her a lot, but she's fresh in my her. head. Yeah, yeah she, she said, you know what, people um, say follow your passion and follow your passion. And she said, you know what? I just want people to get used to following their curiosity. Mm. She's like, because this whole purpose thing, we have a lot of purposes. Our purpose is to be present right now. Our purpose is to be joyful. Our purpose is to learn lessons. Our purpose is to stuff up. Our person is to give. Our purpose is to move. Our person, our purpose is to laugh. Our purpose is to cry. Like we have so many purposes. So we can't load this purpose like it's like it's there's one because oh, like I say like what excites me now like I did you saw I did a presentation about what excites me now and that was really to give people a little bit of a of a lightness around their purpose like hey guess what like my purpose is different than like my my big thing that's driving me is different than it was you know what my big thing that's driving me now is creativity like mm. that's what is my purpose right now creativity cuz I'm feeling What excites me right now is uninhibited expression. That's what's exciting me right now. So that's my curiosity right now. It isn't saving the planet like it was two years ago because I realized I cannot save the planet by trying to save the planet. And the planet does not need saving. And I'm not the manager of the universe, which is another lesson that I've just recently been alerted to. (laughs) I got a letter. (laughs) But but I think what we have to realize with this purpose is your, your number one purpose is to feel joyful. That's mm-hmm. your number one purpose. So whenever you're away from that, just try and get back to a little bit of happiness in whatever it's going to take in that moment. Because if you are doing anything else wild with this word purpose and you're not feeling joy, then you're missing the mark on purpose anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think 
We have to come back to what excites you now? What's cu- what are you curious about now? And follow that. And it might just lead you to another stepping stone. And then you ask the question again, what is what am I excited about now? What am I curious about now? And that is life. That's life. That's all there is to it. There isn't this big, you know, there might be this grandiose thing like Walt Disney created Disney and Steve Jobs created Apple, but they got there through this curiosity and this excitement and this risk that you were talking about. Why is it worth it? Why is it worth it? It is everything. It's just the, the criticism I've faced. I love it because that put a fire in my belly like nothing else ever had adversity like adversity is so powerful because all it is is contrast and we need contrast like we keep talking about would it be fun if everybody loved everything and everybody loved everyone and every idea was glorified and we had no struggles no way we'd just be all in the spirit world already heaven you know we'd we'd all be we wouldn't be here earth is about learning Earth Mm. is about lesson and incarnation and it is about, um, so I think what we have to do is lose the idea of, um, you know, this perfectionism and that this, oh yeah, it's just going to go really easy and be so uh, in love with all of the contrast because it's the contrast that makes it all juicy and fun. And it's also the contrast, like I think what you're, what you're saying at your event, when people say, you know, am I ready to step out into perhaps my new brand or my new company or my new business or my new YouTube channel or my new blog post or like your new podcast? Am I ready to step out into it? And I think what we need to realize is if that's what's exciting you, and that's what you're curious about yet. That is where you need to be right now. And the criticism is going to come. It's going to come. I mean, I've had, I've had some mostly, mostly incredibly loving feedback, but then always that contrast, the contrast is the one which, which the contrast is the one which helps me grow my vision because it, it makes me look in and say, Peter, how serious are you about this? How committed are you about this? Cause I heard something the other day. It was you, um, I don't know. I'm just going to make up my own version of it, but it was, you find out how committed you are when things start to suck Mm -hmm. something like that so um, that's how I interpret it so when when you when things start to suck that's when you step into your real courage your real strength your real boldness about what it is you're doing because if you just started something and everyone loved it I mean how fun is that it sucks Mm -hmm. you want people to challenge why you're doing this you you know you you want all that juicy stuff and you want to also be able to um you know, become even more bold about what you're doing. And the only way for that to happen is for you to be tested. And if you're not tested, it's not going to be worth it. It's fun to overcome adversity. It's fun to break through challenges. It's fun to grow stronger in areas. It's fun to learn. It's fun to, you know, I I think about my first business I built, you know, it, it was, there was so much adversity at the beginning. And, you know, I felt like, there's never a top of the mountain, but I felt like when I had got through, like say one of the, um, you know, I had some quite intense, um, online bullying happen, you know, Mm -hmm. when I had got through that and felt like I really didn't, I was no longer affected by it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that added to the person I am so much that I look back to that phase with so much gratitude. And that is now a huge part of everything that I do. Mm -hmm. So we can't be scared. We can't be scared. We just have to be so welcoming of all of this stuff because that is life. Being a human, being an entrepreneur, being a creator, being a person who is just living. Our role is to get down and dirty. Our role is to experience things. Our role is to feel things. Our our role is to, you know, that's our purpose is to just to be a human in all of its in all of its glory, not just in the times when we are on top of the mountain. And Mm -hmm. it's just it, I think when we can just realize that being a human is the reason we are here is to learn things, to mm-hmm. stuff up. That's why we're here. We have a job to do. Mm-hmm. We have a role and it's not about one big purpose. It's about the little tiny, um, you know, it's like you said, the happiness, the, the happiness. That's that's the number one jo- job for all of us. And my favorite quote is John Lennon. Time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. And the reason is because if you enjoy it, <laughs> then you are 
fulfilling your purpose. Mm. If you are learning something, you're fulfilling your purpose. If you are stuffing up, you're fulfilling your purpose. By being here, you're already fulfilling your purpose. So I think what we need to do is get more in love with curiosity and excitement and fear. And I know you say fear is your, your co-pilot. I love that. <laughs> we we got to fall in love with that rather than just being so scared of everything that isn't hunky-dory because that's freaking boring. Oh my gosh. Well, I need to go back and take notes on all of this and create like 27 quote tiles. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because P.S. I like making quote tiles and I need some beautiful (laughs) ones. Um, But really, that was so beautiful because um, like you said, I think the the contrast, the um, resistance that just, uh, I saw a beautiful quote. It just asks us, you know, how committed are you? How much do you want to do this? And I know that, you know, I know that you've gone through some, um, you know, just some criticism or, or struggles or tough times. And I so think that they are the most beautiful thing that, um, help us grow into the people that we need to be to get to that dream that we want to get to, or that place, or be able to elevate people in the way that we maybe dream of, or just, like you said, just follow more curiosity because following more yeah. cur- curiosity and finding our joy requires um, stepping into a place that we've never been before. So I just mm-hmm. want people to know that as painful as those moments are, I go back and I thank every one of them and I would honestly go through them again because yeah. I found a, a piece of me that I didn't know that I had the strength for. And PETA, I see that in you. I just like, I literally see the strength that radiates out of you because of some of those different things. And I think it's so beautiful. And obviously we need to carry those with us. And, and like you said, um, to be able to get on the other side and have that not affect you. It's true. It's real. You guys, you get to the other side and you don't feel it anymore. You, you just get to carry the lesson from it. So how cool mm-hmm. is that? So, um, Pita, oh my God, I am so excited. Cause I just did my big event, the bliss project. And I know uh-huh. that you have your event coming up that I am like, um, shaking in my boots oh. over. I'm so excited. So, um, it's called the new way live event, um, for millennials who want to show the world how good it's really meant to be. Oh my God, that sentence, it slays me. <laughs> um, so can you tell me a little bit about that? I know some of your topics are freely living, courageously mm-hmm. leading, creatively earning and consciously giving. So can you yeah. tell me a little, just tap, uh, just kind of give me an overview. Yeah, well, the new way is something that I have been working on, I think, for the last three um, the last three years. Not the working on it, but just defining what the new way means to me. Because I've just felt, um, I, I've always felt like like a part of my curiosity has been, uh, you know, what what needs to change for so that the world is how I want it to be for my children, essentially. And I don't like saying, you know, change the world, heal the world, because I think I honor Mother Nature and I honor the universe and God so much that I, I feel like they, you know, I don't know whether one person needs to take that on. You know what I mean? So it's like the new way to me is more an exciting way to uh, describe, you know, what, what sort of times are we heading into Mm. and what, uh, what sort of new normal are we creating as millennials? And when I say millennials, I don't, it's not an age number. It's just anybody who is interested in, you know, anybody at all who is like, yep, you know what? I am so pumped for the time we are moving into. That's what millennial is. But so the new way for me is about bringing together these four areas of conscious, like freely living, which is consciousness, which is all of this spirituality, which is oneness, um, oneness, regardless of your faith and your beliefs and religious, it's this, um, this feeling of deep connection to, um, to our higher self and to um, each other. So it's bringing together that world, that world of beautiful, blissful consciousness with courageous leadership. So that's why the model is um, living, leading, earning, and giving. It brings together consciousness, courageous leadership, money, and contribution. And I think that the reason I pulled them all together is because over my journey, being quite young, when I built my first million dollars, it was, I I had to learn really fast about leadership and courageous leadership. Like, I mean, like, like we talked about real courage, Mm. um, which always comes before the confidence comes, but that's, that's (laughs) how it works. And then, and then money, I had to learn about the spirit of money, the Mm. soul of money. What does money really mean? Is it a dirty word? Absolutely not. What Mm. does money do? 
What, what is our role as money and how can we creatively earn it? So that brings in one of my huge passions, which is entrepreneurship. I'm obsessed with entrepreneurship. I'm obsessed with ideas and I'm obsessed with watching comp- like companies and the soul of companies because I believe that, like I said, ideas and companies are entities. They're spirits and we're going to work for them. So it's bringing together consciousness, um, leadership. So what is, what is your message right now and how are you going to stand in its power? money and entrepreneurship and then contribution because without contribution uh what is it it's the generosity it's the outrageous giving where it's like abnormal to give that much that's what i'm all about like freaking you know and i know you and chris are huge on that too you know you're have the biggest hearts um but it's so it's bringing together those four and saying hey well this is the new way we bring them all together we are you know it's consciousness it's leadership it's money and it's entrepreneurship and it's and it's it's bringing those together and so that we create a new way of being a new way of living and creating a new normal for so that when my when my kids get here Laurie, and this is what drives me so much i don't want them to have this sick idea and then to get to their school and to have everybody you know, shut them down and for them not to, for them to feel like their idea is abnormal. I want them to feel like ideas are normal and beautiful. I want them to feel like their weirdness is normal and beautiful. And and so I'm going to work on like making sure that by the time my kids get here, which may not even be that long, that there is a, there is a normal that celebrates their um, uniqueness and their greatness. And, um, you know, just like I say, show the world how good it's really meant to be. Like we are not even scraping the freaking sides of how, how joyful and how abundant and how beautiful and how collaborative and connected our world can really be. But we are the ones to show the world. And I 100% believe that. So this event, I created it um, as a result of, and I know this was probably the case with you and Bliss, a lo- a, it was meant to happen last year. It was meant to happen the year before and it didn't. Why? Because my soul... Um, my soul didn't really get a word in over my noise for a, for a while. Mm. And... Now it's here. It's um, like, as you know, it's scary to host an event, especially because I'm getting married not um, too far from the event, which is <laughs> getting crazy, but I didn't care. And then I've brought in three special guests who are um, good friends of mine, but doing huge work around the world. Joel, Preston, and Alexi. They're, I mean, they just they inspire me. So I'm bringing them. Mm. We're going to just let it rip, which is um, the theme of, that's actually the theme of my new company that I'm working on, but it's, it's let it rip, which means that there is no rules. There is no boundaries. It is a clear connection between the divine and the audience. And we are 100% vessels for that. If the word bullshit comes out, it's going to come out. If we go on a tangent, it's all good because it is just a mess. It's an event of real change. And it's an event of celebration. And it's an event of, unino- like this. what's the word? Not, I'll just rephrase it like this. Just not being inhibited. Mm. It, it's an event of art. Because like I said, what my curiosity right now is art. Mm. I am obsessed with, letting this human, the spirit flow through humans uninhibited. So I'm decorating, like I'm going to create like a big giant dream catcher out of rope. Mm. Do I really have time to do that? I mean, maybe not if you think that my purpose is something outside of art, but right now my purpose is, is making shit, you know? Mm. So it's just going to be so fun. Like I said, it's, it's no, it's nerve wracking to host an event. Your first one, you know, is it, it's like, mm-hmm. I mean, I've never done it before. My assistant's <laughs> never done it before. But we're piecing it together and I've got all the pieces of the puzzle already. And it's just going to be so damn fun. Okay. Not going to miss that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. So I feel like I got to kind of be a part of it, which I feel, uh, honestly, <laughs> if you have not heard PETA speak in person, um, it's not, I mean, it is so soul shifting and it's not just inspiration. You guys, it is tools. You will leave feeling like you're capable and you're ready. So Peter, where, and when is that? Um, so it's in Scottsdale. I know everybody thinks it's in Australia because I'm Australian, but it's a, <laughs> I ran into a lady today at a conference actually. And she's like, I want to come to your event, but it's too far. And I was like, what do you mean? It's like down the road. <laughs> and she's like, Oh my God, it's in the USA. So yeah, it's in um, it's in Scottsdale. It's May twenty seven, twenty eight. Um, it is. You can get your the information is at www. Why do we even say that anymore? <laughs> World World Wide Web. Peter, <laughs> Peter Kelly. Com forward slash the new way live. And there's something that I'm going to announce next week. But another big part of the vision, um, which is genius, which is my new company, is um, I am all about 
gifting people resources to bring their ideas to life. That's what mm. I'm curious about. That's what I'm exciting. So I'm actually holding a competition so that somebody can win um, $10,000 personally gifted by me and my company to bring their idea or initiative to life. So that's also going to be a part of the event. I haven't announced that yet. So that's being announced on your podcast, which is awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> um, and for the Australians and New Zealanders at home, I know I've got so many international people. Um, we're working on a live stream option for them, but um, the Americans have no excuse. They're all expected to have their bums in the seats at the event. <laughs> so I'm so excited about it. Peta, that is so exciting. And I know that you are, uh, you're in the perfect spot for your event because you are so heart centered right now that no matter what happens, it will be perfect. And I can tell you if you, when you just show up as you, your event will flow amazingly perfect and you have everything for it. And it's just the people who are going to be able to be at it. I'm telling you, if you want to make a massive leap, it's going to, it's going to um, propel you into that place that you want to go. And, um, I'm just so thrilled. So is there anything else that you um, uh, want to share with our listeners? No, I just want to send everybody love and gratitude and just thank you for having me on because, you know, I think it was divinely meant to happen because I was having one of those days where I was just so overwhelmed. And then I was at this conference and I said to my fiance, I've got to, I've got to race home now. I've got to get on Laurie's podcast. And, you know, it was like so perfect because – I suppose everything that people need to hear today is coming from a place of freshness. And I just feel so grateful all the time to be able to be that, um, that vessel. And that's what we all are. We just, you know, to just be that vessel to, mm. to share and to hopefully help, um, help someone the way I've been helped by so many of these types of podcasts. So that's why I'm so pumped. And, you know, people can, people know where to follow me. They, they can find me on Facebook you know, my name is not very common, so they can find me there. They can come on my website. They can join my email tribe. You know, all the all the same thing they want to do. But uh, you know, I'm just I'm just grateful that I got to share on to mm. share on your on your awesome new platform. So thank you so much, Laurie, for having me. Thank you for taking the time. And I'm going to do three rapid fire questions because we just got really smart, and now we have to dumb it down. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to know your your like favorite food. So you've been traveling. You plop on the couch with Eric. What are you gonna plow through? Oh, almond butter. Like there's this crunchy one. <laughs> it's not so, and it has like seven types of nut and seed in it. And I just my finger because I am like a little bit of a monkey. Like I don't wear shoes. I I eat with my hands, mm. and I I'm pretty sure I've lived in Bali like all of my past life. So I just my finger and the almond butter and like the whole thing. No sharing. And I'll just go to town on that. And raw chocolate, like cacao, hardcore mm. cacao, hazelnuts together. So like ideally what I do is I get my raw chocolate and I dip it in the almond butter and that and an almond milk latte. And I am like, that is it. I mean, last meal on earth, it would be that. Favorite funny dog name. Like I know your dog has a name, but what are the other names that you call it? The main one. Oh, so blue. So my, we got a, we got Harley and his Harley is like super like a, he's a senior citizen now. So we call him Sir Halsworth <laughs> because he's really proper. But then we have blue and he is a, um, he is a blue healer. He's just the most, he's a funny dog. We call him blueberries, but if you look at him, he is so staunch at like blueberries just makes him sound so not like he is. So every time I say blueberries, come here, he's like, mom, what are you talking about? Firstly, I don't have any blueberries because you got them muted off. And secondly, like I'm a staunch. Why are you calling me blueberries? So we have blueberries and Sir Halsworth. Oh my God. I love it. I, I don't, they get like a million different names. And very last question. If you had 30 seconds in an elevator and someone said, how do I find my purpose? What would you say to them before you got off? I would say, just listen to what excites you and don't judge it. And then just find, listen to what you're curious about and just move in that direction. And if you move in that direction, you'll find it. Like they're like your lily pads. Mm. They're like your lily pads to your next idea or your next thing. Excitement and curiosity. They oh. are the golden keys. I love it. You would be my elevator fairy forever. <laughs> so thank I'm you. I'm super introverted. So I stand in the elevator. I'm not always the person who's like, hey, I'm super introverted. So I'm usually standing there like, oh. well, now you know what to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is how you get to your purpose. Okay. Thank you so much for being on, PETA. I can't even tell you. I feel so energized. It was like, you know, you hit the evening and you're like, oh my gosh, the day is uh, winding down. And I just talked to you and I'm like, 
I am levitating right now. So thank you so <laughs> much for being on the podcast. You guys follow PETA, go to PETAKelly.com. Make sure you attend her live event. And if you love this episode, make sure you share it with a friend and brighten their days. Maybe somebody's looking for their purpose. And yeah. you guys, until next time, go out and earn your happy. So much love to you. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me on the Earn Your Happy podcast. I am so glad that you stopped by. If you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would love it, that would be absolutely amazing and we would be forever grateful. Also, please leave us a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving us an honest thought, an honest comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear more of. It would really help us out on our journey to helping thousands and thousands of people. Until then, don't forget to earn your happy. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. Want to know a huge secret to my success? Okay, not only my success, but just about every single person that I have interviewed on this podcast who is successful has this in common. You guys, they love to journal. They capture their life lessons and what they're grateful for. But a lot of people don't keep this up consistently. And most people do know that the research shows that journaling deepens your gratitude and increases self-awareness. But did you also know that journaling decreases stress and helps you achieve your goals faster? In fact, journaling is a huge differentiator between average performers at work and high performing people. It leads to longer term clarity, confidence, and success. So why don't more people journal? Why didn't I journal consistently? Honestly, they don't like staring at a blank page. It's hard to carry a book around with you or a notepad, and they just don't even know what to write about, or they just forget. That's why I know that you're going to love Growth Day. It's the world's number one system for self-improvement, and it's like all-in-one personal development in an app. And it has an awesome digital journal, and people love it. Growth Day's digital journal has hundreds of research-backed writing prompts for self-reflection, positive mindset, confidence building, and success. I use them all the time, and it makes me think in ways that I typically don't, and it makes me ask myself better questions, which we all know gets better results in our life. It even has prompts that help you develop a daily, weekly, or monthly habit of reflecting on your life and identifying areas to grow. So it's a perfect time of year to start journaling, you guys. When you sign up at Growth Day, you also get systems for habit tracking, goal setting, and scoring and improving every area of your life. Best of all, I get to teach there too, you guys. I'm so excited. I hope that I get to see you. I teach live in Growth Day every single month with a new topic just for you. So join me there. Start your free trial at growthdate.com slash Lori. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. And I want to make sure that you have my phone number and I'm not kidding. Did you know that I have a community text number for real? My phone number is 310-496-8363. This goes directly to my phone. All you have to do is text the word daily to 310-496-8363. And I literally text you every single day, Monday through Friday. I actually just got done 30 seconds ago texting a bunch of people back. And I talk to you all of the time. You guys, people always ask me how I got my community text number and how it works. Well, all you have to do is you can just go to community.com and get your own. Community makes it easy to get a phone number that you can use to build your audience using text. People just text you at your number and they're added to your group. Then you can text them out audios, video links, anything you want. You guys, I text out happy birthday videos. I love to send podcast links, thoughts about life, book recommendations, uh, different events that I'm doing in the local area. Texting gets me out of the noise of social media and directly into your hand. And now you can start texting your people too. Just go to community.com to get your phone number. They give you a 10 digit real phone number, not those weird short codes that look like spam, but it's more than a phone 
phone number. Your new number comes with an inbox for SMS and texting. This means you can actually manage your text list from your computer and an app on your phone. You can schedule texts to send at certain times and to certain groups. You can even set up auto replies or let your assistant or customer service team answer your text messages via community's awesome dashboard. Just go to community.com and ask for a free demo. They'll show you how it works and get you your number. It's time to start texting your audience versus just posting on social media. Everyone uses community for that. So go check them out at community.com. I can tell you it's not just great for communicating with my audience, but Chris and I use community and our texts to also sell out our launches. I'm telling you, you get such an incredible response because you really are creating a true deep sense of community and it's so intimate. It's freaking amazing. Go check it out at community.com. Hey, do you know what the big secret is this year? And it shouldn't be a secret because this should be your biggest focus. It is building your community. I am always working on building and nurturing my community. And everyone is talking about the power of community. Without an online community, you just cannot grow organically or create a real movement, which is what I know that we're all after. And you can build trust or monetize your audience. When you get community right, not only does your audience grow faster, but so do your sales. But where's everybody going to be managing their communities these days? And a lot of online entrepreneurs and thought leaders are turning to Circle.so. Circle is an all-in-one community platform. It lets you host content and create discussions, live streams, group chats, and memberships all under your own brand. And what's so cool about Circle.so is that you don't even need a website or Facebook group. Instead, Circle lets you build your own community site where you can host content and manage your members. You can even create locked and unlocked content spaces, groups, and classes. How freaking cool is that? You can put your content behind a paywall too, and you can charge different amounts of money for different spaces on your community site. Circle.so is famously easy to use, and it has a free 14-day trial for you, so you can go check it out, see if you like it, see if you love all the options. Just go to circle.so. Go check it out right now, you guys. Imagine being able to manage your community, start group chats and live classes, and accept payments all in one place. Kind of mind-blowing since this is usually spread all over the place. You have to log into so many different things. If this is the year to capture, organize, and monetize your community, head over to circle.so. You can get a free trial and start building your online community right now. Just go to circle.so. You guys, you get the 14-day free trial. So just go and see if it's for you. It's going to streamline everything and make your life so much easier. It's so freaking cool.